LinkedIn News. From the news team at LinkedIn, I'm Jesse Hempel, and this is Hello Monday, our show about the changing nature of work and how that work is changing us. Today, I'm bringing you a very special conversation. It's a conversation with a longtime Hello Monday listener, Susanna Dawn. And in January, as we announced our theme for the year, reinvention, she got in touch. She's in the midst of a massive personal reinvention. Susanna is coming out as trans. Now, Susanna spent more than a decade in the military. She was a personnel officer, a platoon leader, and a lieutenant. And then she went on to do office work. But Susanna was doing this as a different person, under a different name. Susanna always felt out of alignment, as she described it, until now. As she says, I'm not what I used to be. I am who I've always been. Today, Susanna's launching a new career as a freelance writer. And as with coming out, she's still at the very beginning of the process. Our conversation is raw. This is all still so new for Susanna, but it's also this great celebration. You can hear it in her voice. Here's Susanna. In many ways, I already I already knew who I was. I mean, I knew since the age of three. I, I have distinct memories of age three, laying in bed and praying to wake up in the proper body. Wow. <laughs> but... It, it was a slow process, yeah. and all all my life, I had to be what family said I was. So they only cared about what the shell was. My dad only cared about what is success. It's money. It's business. It's these tangible things. And I went through one marriage, and then when I the, my second marriage is actually when things started opening up for me because she's like, "You are who you are." And she's not had any problems with me, kind of, as I as I kind of explore. We're in China, and she's like, oh, just wear whatever you want outside. Nobody will care. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so what causes someone to be brave enough to come out? For Susanna, the beauty store Sephora played a huge role. It's like the first time I walked into a Sephora with, with one of my daughters, I was just going to get some foundation or something and play with it. I had no clue what was really going to happen. And then the next thing I know, I'm talking with a beauty advisor. She treats me exactly as I've always wanted to be treated. And by the time I walk out the door, I've got foundation on, I've got eyeshadow, I've got blush, all in a very light neutral. So I'm still kind of that androgynous look. I hadn't cut my hair in like four years. It'd been three years at that point. I hadn't cut my hair. Um, I didn't get my first hairstyle for the first time until last July. <laughs> wow. So Yesterday is, was the fifth time. <laughs> I can just say, and our listeners can't see it, so I'm just going to say it looks beautiful and yet not over the top. It looks like very natural, long. We're catching you at this moment where you've like had all of these amazing moments. Take us back to before Sephora, to like the earliest moments when you were beginning to live a little bit outside that box. What were the very first moments where you started to step out a little? Okay. I I see things happening for, they happen when they're supposed to happen. In 2017, um, my wife knew my background. I told the middle daughter, we we were overseas and I kind of told her what was up. We'd gone to somebody's wedding overseas and everybody's sitting down and it just, kind of happened. And once it happened, once it happened, then then it's like, she's on board and she's all ready for me to just, just oh, let, let's get you pills. Let's get you whatever. Really? So that's I, the way that your yeah. children responded. That's the way that your daughter that, responded. That, that's, the way, that's the way that one did. She's, yeah. she's like ready to push me out the door. And it's like, <laughs> um, excuse me. I'm, I'm very different because my whole journey has been a walk of faith as well. That's been important to me. So after that moment, I felt like the door was opening to do this transition. So I actually went going through the Bible to find the reasons that I shouldn't be doing this. It's like, okay, this is what everybody says. You can't do this. And I never found it. I, what I found, what was spoken to me through everything that I'm looking at was I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And then over the next few years, it looked like crap, but I'm letting my hair grow. I'm getting flack from my dad, but it's like, who cares? <laughs> yeah. So, so are you still a person of faith? Yeah. You've been through this massive transition. Every step 
that I take. In, in fact, in many ways, my faith is stronger. I had a conversation with my dad, which was one of, in some ways, it was one of the worst days because I, I said the words to him mm -hmm. and the venom from him was just, it, it was very painful. Yeah. Um, but one of the last things he said to me was, so I guess God made a mistake. Mm -hmm. and, and I just looked at him and said, God doesn't make mistakes. And that was kind of the last thing I said to him. Tell me about the very first time you introduced yourself to someone as Susanna. Okay, that one. So so there was that first visit Christmas, the day after Christmas of 19. And then on New Year's Day, I went back to Sephora and I saw a different beauty advisor because I was, I was walking in with blinders on. It's like I'm focusing on either to try and find a face that I know or I got blinders just looking at stuff because I'm a total introvert. But that day, I go in with the same daughter. We go in there. She's talking with somebody about skincare. The gal mentioned that she had oily skin, which is what I've always had. And so I ask a question, and then we start talking, and she's focused on me. And at one point, she asked my name, and I stumbled and gave her the old name. And she just kind of looked at me. I, and what I saw in her eyes, she didn't say anything. What I saw in her eyes was, is that your final answer? <laughs> and then I said it, and she's like, that sounds better. <laughs> How did that make you was, feel that moment? It, 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 it was nervous. Yeah. It, at that point, a lot of what I was doing, a lot of these steps were nerve-wracking. Yeah. And a few days later, I saw the first person, and that was when she had asked me my name. And then it became much easier for me to just say it. Yeah. And and when I said it, she's like, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. So I was in a place where I was accepted. And then with the shutdown, there were advantages to the to the masks for me because it was like six months later when I another door was opened and all of a sudden I'm on hormones. Wow. And moving forward with that, which surprised me. And how did you make the decision to to begin the hormones? Did uh, you have well, support from your family? Nobody. I've, I've been alone at home for over two years because of the pandemic. So it's just been me and not really a lot. Like I said, I, I introvert. So I don't have a lot of people that I can talk to. I don't have this, I've never really had this community of people that I could go to with problems or anything. It just didn't, didn't exist for me. Every time I left a job, it kind of ended the connections. Mm -hmm. So there's very few. And growing up, I always got the impression from people that I was more of a bother. So it just helped me to stay further away and not take those chances. Those chances didn't happen until during the last couple of years when I found the people that I could, I figured I could trust, which was again, more of the beauty advisors who've become the women closest to me. And a lot of them are Christian too. So mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. I've got this support group that I never expected going through all of this. Um, the mask helped because I mean, I, I sent you the photo last month yeah. of, yeah. Those three dates, the, the day that I, that first day, exactly a year later, and then this past year, and I can see how much I've changed yeah. in those. But the mask during the first year was helpful to hide this. <laughs> you know, Susanna, I love that you say that. My wife and I have a, a friend who transitioned genders recently, and they said it was so powerful to have the pandemic because it was an extended period of time during which they weren't witnessed by anyone else. And they didn't have the context and the social connections that they had to reinvent. And so it created both the space and time for them to meditate on the decision and get really clear on it, and also the room to actually act on it that they might not have had otherwise. I'm curious if that resonates for you. It's, it was a quiet time. I didn't, I didn't have the connections. I was able to kind of keep myself busy 
Susanna first tiptoed into her new presentation during these trips that she took to the local mall. She'd dress a bit more androgynously, experiment with a bit of makeup. Going into it those first few months before it all started, I was nervous. I'd go to the mall. I was starting to make connections, but still not there. And it was a time when even walking in the mall, I could put on some foundation. I could go something really light, look androgynous. And there's still that fear in the back of the head. You're looking around to see who's who's going to stare at you. Who's mm-hmm. staring at you? Where's, where's the trouble going to come from? Um, where was your wife during this period? You said she was working overseas. Yeah. Um, does, does she know about this shift? Is she supportive of it from afar? Yeah. 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 She's she's seen the photos. In fact, we had a video chat yesterday. And from the beginning, she's she's always known kind of what my core is. As, as this transition unfolded and, and as... I started getting photos that I was more comfortable with sending her. Yeah. I would send them to her. Um, for my birthday last year, she she's like, happy birthday, Susanna. And she talks about how she sees me being a happier and better person as I progress through this. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty it, powerful it, thing. It, it's, it's, again, I think that's where the, that's where all these, this box stuff comes from because I couldn't be that way before. Mm-hmm. Now, when I have conversations with people, the first person to know was like two years ago. The second one was last year. And then last year I came out to eight to 10 people from my past of which it was all pretty positive. These were people I wasn't really connected with. We'd cross paths once or twice, but there was something about them that I wanted that connection. But who people were viewing, going to view me as in the past, I couldn't have the connection that feels right with me. Hello Monday, we'll be right back. When we return, Susanna will tell us about how her work life has changed. And we're back. Susanna is still right in the early stages of this transition. It's freeing, but it's also so nerve-wracking. And when you really start to think about it, you realize it also involves a lot of administrative work. Our gender is an identifier in so many ways. And when Susanna finally decided to change hers, it took a lot of effort. So it took me until last August to finally get off the fence. So really, August to now, it's it's like only six months-ish. That yeah. I'm starting this in November. I did a prayer on a Sunday. It's like, I'd like a miracle a day. Mm-hmm. The next day, Sephora sent me the email. It said, we want your story and we're going to do it next month. The next day I contacted my wife. It's like, maybe it's time to do the name change. The next day I'm doing legal changes. Mm-hmm. So it's like, everything is legally changed. Is that complicated to do for for somebody who's never done this before? Is that okay? When I did that legal change, it, every place is different, and I know this. I, I've seen some people talk about even in the same place, it can be difficult. Somebody I talked to around me in this area, it it took them months to get the legal name change. I was hearing the probate officer telling people it was going to be. She was seeing six weeks most of the time. She'd seen a couple of them at two weeks. So I was like, okay, hopefully by Christmas, my name will be changed and I can really move forward. Then, so that was on a Wednesday and Saturday, I got two envelopes in the mail. My, I had, I had the certified documentation of my legal changes done in four days. Within two weeks, the name was changed. All the important stuff was done. And then two weeks later, it was like filming for the video. And by the end of the year, all this stuff is done. So I'm, and I still have a lot of things to change Yeah. because the older you get, the more places you have to change your name. (laughs) Look, it's messy and confusing. I mean, you and I were in touch on LinkedIn and that was one, honestly, Susanna, 
I hadn't thought a lot about until you ran into the issue you ran into. So, so tell us about that. Like you, what issue did you have at LinkedIn? So, so with LinkedIn, I had two LinkedIn profiles. This was part of my walking that fence is is like, I want to start getting myself out there as Susanna, but I still have the legal aspect. And this was something that I had to deal with last year until November. Um, So I made the decision once the, once the name chain was done, I made the decision to pull the old profile into the new, not the new into the old. A lot of people I know, they just change their name on, on their profile and off they go. I didn't want to do that. It, it felt more right for me to keep everything that I had. You didn't want to just kill that one and make a new one entirely. Well, the disadvantage to that is then I lose the connections that I already had. Of course, 15 years worth of business connections you've made. So then when I hit the point, it's like, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to change. I'm going to do this. I read all the instructions. I think I've got it down. And I go to do the merge. I push it. It won't do it. The two profiles have to have the same name Hmm. for one didn't know that. At this point, Susanna reached out to me and asked if I could help her. And of course I did. In the process, I reflected on just how much we can lose when we come out. Living your truth always seems to come with costs or consequences. All the seemingly small things that just add up. For Susanna, merging her profiles meant losing recommendations and the votes on skills that her connections had given her. And I think there's a physical representation of this as well all of the social pieces of our lives that fall away. I asked Susanna how her transition had impacted her relationships with people and whether some of those had gone away as well. Oh, and that's what I found. My whole history, a lot of it being that introvert aspect, I never really made close connections. Um, I'm, I'm still, it's like there's a handful of people that I'm connected to from the military, and I think a lot of them haven't quite figured it out yet, or they probably would have been gone. I look at all these people that I've that I've lost. Sometimes there's connections there that the the reconnecting with some with the people that I have reconnected with. There's actually more to this connection now than there was in the past. Yeah, it's for meaningful. for whatever reason, and and I'm not going to say it's because of the visual change. Yep. I think it's really because I'm able to be my authentic self. Yeah. Well, so what is what has this done for your job, for your career? Um that's on its own slow path at the moment because it's like now I'm reaching out to people trying to find opportunities and a lot of my time over the last just the last 6 months has been split between trying to find opportunities for consulting and this memoir has been in the middle of everything. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of things that are just in different stages of flux right now. Yeah. The three posts that I've done over the last three weeks, that's probably more posts than I ever did in the previous 15 years of having a LinkedIn profile. <laughs> that's some of the changes that I'm going through is just being able to being able to make the comments that I did on the office hours. Yeah, I loved that. It's like in the past I couldn't do that. I'm something's always holding me back. Yeah. And and now I'm not. And now it's the the hardest part right now is just I think in some ways trying to get myself out there as me, let the wings spread so I can fly. And and then see what happens because I really like the consulting aspect and I like being able to see different things, talk with different people and find ways to give them new ideas that may not happen now, but over time it may lead to something else. So it's yeah. it's that scattering of seeds. So I feel like right now I'm in the midst of scattering seeds and trying to see what's going to actually pop up. Susanna, it is such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for taking the time to share this part of your journey with us. And thank you for being part of the Hello Monday community generally. It is, uh, you know, a privilege to watch the journey. 
It's been a crazy journey, and that's kind of what I tell people. It's I, I still don't quite believe I'm doing it. Now I can walk out as me and fly. <laughs> that was Susanna Dawn. She's working on a memoir, and I, for one, can't wait to read it. I thought Susanna's story was important to tell because coming out is never easy. Showing up as your authentic self is always so much easier said than done. It takes a lot of courage and bravery. This week on Office Hours, I want you to come with your own stories of courage. Tell us times you've lived authentically. Join us for Office Hours on Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern. I'll be there, and hopefully Susanna will be too. You can find us on the LinkedIn news page or email us for a link at hellomonday at linkedin.com. And as always, if you like the show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Hello Monday is a production of LinkedIn. The show is produced by Taisha Henry with help from Wesley Wingo. Joe DeGiorgi mixed our show. Florence Iriando is head of original audio and video. Dave Pond is our technical director. Michaela Greer and Victoria Taylor live authentically. Our music was composed just for us by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. Dan Roth is the editor-in-chief of LinkedIn. Sarah Storm remains our fairy godmother. I'm Jesse Hempel. See you next Monday. Thanks for listening. I'm over 50. I will turn 57 in April. When April what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying because I'm the 17th. 23rd. All right. I'm a, I am definitely a Taurus. Um, but if you go on the Chinese side, I'm a snake. So go figure. <laughs> <laughs>